Aloha and welcome to our video on cloud types and precipitation. The goals of today's video are to describe how clouds are classified. We'll compare and contrast clouds and fogs. We'll explain what must happen for precipitation to form and then we'll identify what controls the type of precipitation that reaches the Earth's surface. Okay, so in this picture we see a bunch of clouds and these clouds all have the names and the names kind of give us a clue as to what they are. First up, we have cirrus, and cirrus clouds are what are, we call wispy clouds. They're kind of feathery-like. They tend to be upper-level high clouds. You can see the cirrus clouds here, and they're just those thin little wisps that are up there. We can also have stratus clouds, and stratus clouds are going to be sheet-like clouds. Okay, so they're going to cover the whole sky. What we'll notice is we can have cirrostratus, which are high. Notice the cirrus here, but just kind of more layered out. They're going to be banded here. We can see cirrostratus there. We can also have alto stratus, which are going to be mid-level stratus clouds. And same thing, a little bit thicker, kind of works that way. And then as we get down lower, we see our stratus clouds down here, our low stratus clouds here. Those low ones are going to cover the whole sky. So when you go outside and the whole sky is kind of gray, it's going to be this stratus cloud. If it's kind of white and puffy and a little gray, then we can have these stratocumulus clouds. And that brings us to our third type, which is cumulus, and these are our puffy clouds. These are the fun ones to watch. So our white puffy clouds that you'd like to go outside and see what you see in the shapes, that's what's there. There's a couple other words. We talked about alto already being mid-level, so we can have alto cumulus just like we had alto stratus. We can have cirrocumulus, which are going to be thin, wispy, puffy ones. Generally, it'll cover the whole sky. We call it a mackerel sky, and we'll see a better picture of that coming up. But the other term I want you to know is nimbus, and nimbus quite simply means rain. So if I have nimbostratus clouds, that means that I have stratus clouds that are now raining and we see precipitation. If we have cumulonimbus clouds, then we have this cumulus clouds, and here we have vertical development forming an anvil head. This is our thunderstorm, and you can see this rain happening underneath it there as well. So we can mix these together. You can have cirrocumulus like we talked about. You can have stratocumulus okay, down here. So by mixing them, we kind of give an idea of what it is. That's how we can define what the cloud looks like. So in this picture, we're going to see a little more realistic of what we're talking about with the clouds. Remember, we have our cirrus clouds, and you can see here how they're wispy and kind of feathery. You can have a cirrostratus, which is a high layer of clouds there, and that's going to give us that halo around the sun, or sometimes it's a halo around the moon. And then our cirrocumulus, you can kind of see it here. It's like a mackerel sky, and it's because it looks like a bunch of scales up there. As we come down to our middle level clouds, we can have our alto stratus here where the sun's kind of visible, but it's just a little bit there. Notice it's not a halo, it's just kind of a bright spot, and we can have our alto cumulus here. And then as we get to our low clouds, that's where we'll have our stratus clouds, which is just like a layer, or a nimbostratus, meaning we have this rain going on. It's a steady, all-day kind of rain. We can have stratocumulus, where we kind of see a little puffiness, our cumulus clouds, where we have a lot of puffiness, and then we can have our big cumulonimbus thunderstorms, where we have a lot of this uplifting, we get a lot of cloud development that way, and we get our showers, our thunderstorms this way. So just another idea of how to look at the clouds. So we have this cloud formation and we get this condensation to make the little droplets. We can see our cloud droplets here in the picture. But how do we get precipitation? And if it's cold air, and that's what I want you to know, that this is for cold air, we go through what they call the Bergeron process. And what that means is we can have some super cooled water and we'll form these ice crystals. These ice crystals, as they're kept aloft, will grow into a snow crystal through the process of deposition. So if you recall, we talked about how this water vapor, this gas, okay, can go to a solid directly. So it's going to go to that snow, okay, and that process is what we call deposition. And deposition happens when it's a cold environment, and that's how we get snow formation in a cold air environment through this Bergeron process. Okay, so what if the air is warm? If we have warm air, then we don't follow the Bergeron process. Instead, we go through this collision and coalescence process. And what that means is that we're going to have these little cloud droplets, and these cloud droplets are going to randomly move around, and they're going to bump into each other and eventually form a large cloud droplet. That large cloud droplet is a little bit heavier, so gravity is going to pull it down. 
And as it's pulled down, it's going to grow. It's going to bump into other cloud droplets and we get a typical raindrop. That raindrop is going to fall through. It'll get to be a large raindrop here. And then that large raindrop can break into a bunch of different raindrops here. And the process just continues. And that's how we make rain in a warmer air environment. So through the collision and coalescence process in warm air, the burgeon process in cool air, we can start seeing this formation of precipitation. And what reaches the earth is gonna be determined by what it flows through. If we see in our picture here, we have this warm air region here, what's gonna happen is all of the ice crystals, all of the rain droplets that fall through all this warm air, it's gonna melt and it's gonna reach the ground here as rain. If there is an area of cold air, which we see this cold air under here, what we're gonna notice is that we're gonna have this warming up of the precipitation. So it's gonna fall as rain this way. And then as it gets down there and hits on the surface, it's gonna hit a cold surface and it'll freeze here. So if it's warm air, it's gonna stay rain all the way down. But if it's cooler air, cooler temperatures outside, cooler surfaces, we can get freezing rain occurring that way. Now, if we have much more cold air here, then what we have is we'll have these snowflakes and these ice crystals come down, they'll form into raindrops, and as these raindrops travel down through all this cold air, they'll freeze, and that's how we get our sleet. And then finally, we can have snow, and snow is where there's no warm air at all. These crystals that fall, they just fall all the way down to the earth that way. So that's our three of our four types of precipitation. We have our rain, our sleet, and our snow. Freezing rain is just when it gets to the earth, it touches the surface and the surface is cold enough, it's gonna cause it to freeze that way. So what is our fourth type of precipitation? Well, that would be hail. And hail is really kind of interesting. What happens is, is we'll have some rain occurring this way. And you can see the rain happening there. But because it's in a cumulonimbus cloud, as we, we normally see hail formation, we're gonna have this rapid uplifting, okay? So you can see this uplifting going on here. This uplifting is gonna take these raindrops and lift them back up to where they're gonna freeze. As they freeze and get larger, they're gonna plummet down, and then they're going to melt a little bit on the outside again, all the crystals will melt again, and then maybe it'll get lifted back up, and this can happen several times. When this happens, it lays out this ring structure that you can see over here in our hailstorm. Notice that we have a ring here, we have another ring here, we have another one here, we have another one here. So you can see how it's built from these rapid thawings and refreezings as it's being lifted up and dropped and lifted up until it gets big enough that it's gonna fall down to the earth by gravity. So hail is, if we have our rain, it's gonna get carried back up, it'll freeze, then it'll collect more ice crystals, drop back down, it'll collect some more water, get blown back up and refreeze over, and that's how we get hail formation. Okay, so that's it for our video. As always, good luck on your quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.